Aloha and Hawaii everybody it's on the interwebs. Today I'm going to go and show you my preferred settings on the Denon AVR-SM58. Yes, I had to read the manual, right? I'm not good with I'm not good with the names and all that kind of stuff, right? The 750H on the Denon line. So um, I have another video that talks about what the settings are in a general sense. You know, I am a hobbyist, right? I've been working with uh, AV systems for um, personal and, 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 and uh, consulting um, for friends and family, as well as some other side projects uh, since the 1990s when Dolby Digital came out, 5.1, okay? So I'm going to show you what I know about these settings. When I started, there were no such things as song bars, right? I'm just giving you a general sense because you... There's a lot of settings here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight settings already is a, is, that's way more than most soundbars have. Soundbars have what input you have, uh, how well you want your center channel uh, volume to be, your rear and your subwoofer. <laughs> so that's really what you have. You don't have a lot of room to play with. They either have one HDMI in or one H and one HDMI out. And that's kind of the average, right? You can choose between HDMI and um, optical cable. So when you get into this kind of system, it gets pretty deep. So again, if you first need an explanation what these things are, take a look at my other video. Um, it's no more than you know 15 minutes or less. You can fast forward and things like that. Uh, and then this one here is going to show you how I set it up in my preferred settings um, this day and age. All right. So on audio, let's go to audio real quick. So what I would I what I would do typically is um, I put unbox the amp, plug in all my speakers, watch the scenes that I know, right? Because I already know what my speakers sound like, right? And then just kind of ballpark it, right? Just to see what the amp can do. And I do that by turning on the test tone, right? Going back, go back behind the um on the first video so you can see where that's at. And I might even just go a bit show you here, but then I would go and turn test tone on, do it, you know, making sure everything sounds right, right? Even. You're making sure everything sounds even, evenly toned, and then and then you move into your distance, right, and um, and then see if that's all matched up, right, and you start by measuring tape. And sorry if I keep saying right, you know, I'm just trying to make sure I I, I am confirming. <laughs> I'm thinking like you're sitting right there. Uh, so then you would go and do that, right? Uh, then you go and do the, then you could adjust from that point on and keep adjusting, keep adjusting. Um, I would then record those manually. And then I would then run the setup assistant or the Odyssey set assistant and see how close I am. That's my personal test. If I bought a brand new system, then I would run the Odyssey testing first. See how it sounds. And then reverse engineer. Then we reset or write everything down, reset everything, and try to get there. I mean, if, you're, if you don't do it professionally, you got to see what the manufacturers think, right? Um, and then try to get to the, to at least that level. If you're a professional and you're better than a manufacturer, then, then, you know, it's your theater system. So no one can really tell you what's good or bad. All right. So then you adjust the sound levels and things like that. If you ran the Odyssey, you just go all the way through there. A couple of things, just to, a recap on there is the fact that the restore, it sets it back to zero. So when I'm saying, go ahead and play around, you know, it's your app. It's not real, right? Go ahead and, you know, do a default, then do the Odyssey and back and forth. You have to always reset it by doing the restore. Right? Audio delay, uh, I talked about in the other video. That really doesn't happen too much on this kind of system. Now, in the budget level, but if you're at the high end level, of course, you might have preamps and all that kind of thing. Right? So here, go right into here. What would I personally do? I would go in here and I would set it up where I think the volume level is at my house. Right? In a default setting. I would go ahead and set the limiter. And I would set this limiter to 80, I'd probably say 70, only because I know this amp at, at 70 is booming. And I wouldn't play it that loud. So just in case you have some gas and you're not there, they won't bother their neighbors and all that kind of thing, right? So I would do that. Um, uh, power round level, the last one, I would probably say, I would probably move it to um, my default at 60. So I move it to 60. And then, you know, that'll depend on your speakers too, right? So this is giving you a general sense. One thing you need to know is that your amp and your speakers, it will behave differently when you change your speakers or you change your amp. What does that mean? So right now, I know I have my Yamo set up, bookshelf speakers, right? I know what volume it is. I know what independence it is. I know what it, how good it is on this amp that's on the bottom of my Yamaha. 
I don't know what the, vol the, the good volume is on the Denon. When I say that, as you're turning it up past 50, you will hear start hitting a, 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 bit, a big it, just sweet spot. 62, 65, 58 of when it goes from nice to right, just right, right? So that's what you want. So I'm just going to say 60 right now, the mute level. That means that when you press mute, does it go all the way to zero or is it 5%, 15%, right? And I'm going to go so, so full. That's my default settings. So again, this is what I would do, right? This is what I would do, all right? And then you go to your manual EQ. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on default. Um, I really don't like playing with this too much, but what are the settings? You can say manual EQ, you can just start adjusting everything, or you can just leave it as a default. I leave it as default. Uh, I like to leave everything flat, and then from that point on, I really just do, um, I will really, if you, okay. I usually leave the, this EQ at flat, because I buy tonally matched speakers. Okay, that means that all the speakers are basically the same size, and they sound the same. So all I can do is change the crossover uh, when the bass gets cut off, or I can change the distance so it has a general uh, volume control. So you can change the volume control by the volume level, or you can change it by distance, right? Rewind it if you need to understand a little bit more on that. But I keep it because I, I usually get tonally matched speakers, the same speakers, not just the same brand, but they match. It's a set, right? So I leave it off. So now we're going to go to v now we're going to video we're going to um, the setup I'm going to go and keep it at audio out the AVR that means the AV out is going to the TV right then I'm going to look at the HDMI pass through and I'm going to keep it on okay pass through source this is my only source which is my Apple TV all right and then my remote control select is I'm going to say it controls the AV, turns it on, and it throws my my uh, Apple TV on. Now, this is semi-complicated because you can also have these kind of settings on your TV and your source, specifically the Apple TV. So you guys got, you got to make sure it works and matches, right? If you need a video, more detailed video on that, let me know. But if you just have your Apple TV and you have the setting, it should work, right? Now, HDMI control. This is where these two things combine. Control and arc. If I turn this on, okay, it automatically turns the arc on. All right, what does that mean? That means that if I'm using the HDMI and I plug it in the arc, it's assuming that, right? Can I turn that off? If I turn that off, can I turn arc on? The answer is yes. Why is that? Because if I take my HDMI cord from my Apple TV, okay, to my receiver, and my receiver to my TV, everything can, is controlled through ARC because Apple TV recognizes ARC. If I had a non-ARC device, like a legacy device, it doesn't know what ARC does, you'd have to go ahead and make sure HDMI control is on and ARC is on. This is the simplest version of it, just ARC on, and everything will turn on. And what does that do? It lets you control things like, like the TV switching on, power, and all that kind of thing, right? Automatic, as you can tell, it grades it out because it's gonna do it automatically versus messing around and doing the combination of the two. All right? Okay, I'm just staying here and doing it slowly because uh, this is the biggest question that I get. Um, you'll see that from the other video, is how does ARC slash eARC work and, you know, this is not working, and I go, did you check the back of your TV? Are you plugged into ARC on the back of your TV? Are you plugged into ARC on the on your receiver? And how are you cabling it? And I always tell them, I use one cable for a lot of reasons. One is cable management, so I go for my Apple TV, input into my AV, right? Um, whatever source I'm gonna have, and I'll show you that a little bit later, and then goes out from my receiver, one more cable goes only to the TV. So what comes from my little, um, uh, wall management, wire management there, it's only one HDMI and a power cable and a network cable. And I can actually turn the network cable off because the TVs don't really get that many updates and they're smaller updates, right? Versus like an Apple TV update or an Xbox update, they're, they're, they're pretty big, okay? Again, rewind and pause if you need to, okay? So this is my default setting, HDMI pass-through on, okay? Um, 
that automatically made it where my pass through source was the Apple TV because it's on right now. The remote control select is power on the AV and the source. Okay. If you didn't understand what I'm saying is when you do this kind of a setup just like this, if you powered your TV on, everything would turn on. If you powered your Apple TV on, everything would turn on. If you powered your receiver on, everything would turn on and it would, everything would turn off on the same power button. And is that what you want? Most people want that. Okay. Well, press enter. Go back. Now we're going to go into the on-screen display. On-screen display is basically what your AV displays onto your TV. What your AV displays onto your TV. If you want the volume control to be showing up, it'll be on the bottom. You can move it to the top. You can turn it off. If you want to see your volume show up from your AV, right? Not your TV volume, but your AV volume. This is what you do. I get this question a lot too, right? I turn it off, okay? Um, and then info button, do you want it on or off? And that's kind of like your AV info. I uh, mostly use frequency and things like that. Do you want it on or off? And now I'm going to turn that on because I like to see what's going on, All right? Now playing, always on, auto off, always on. I always leave it on, always on, okay? What is now playing? It's showing you the title and things like that, okay? 4K signal format by no hesitation you turn that on to enhance technically what does that do it just opens up the port i think the default is like four two zero or four two two this will get you to at least four two two four 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 and that's more for chromatic stuff and if i'm misstating that you know correct me if i'm wrong but you definitely want that on enhance. A lot of things happen on enhance. You know, between sound is better. It get, opens up the you know. Just think about it as your internet provider. If you have faster speed, faster port, open up, open the port, then you get it more enhanced stuff on there. Okay. TV format NTSC, NTSE, or PAL. NTSC if you live in Americas, right? PAL if you live overseas or certain countries. Okay. Now we're going to go into the inputs, input assignment. You're going to see the map of where everything is at, your HDMI port. So if you turn this AV around, you would see HDMI ports. Same option for the same kind of input. You can plug into the digital, which is your, your optical cable, or your analog, which is your regular red, red and white RCA cable, or your video S cable, the right traditional yellow, right? You know, everything else on, on is on auto. Um, quick thing here. And I'll probably mention it a bit later. Just because it's a DVD doesn't mean you have to put it in DVD. You can put it in anywhere you want, right? And I'll show you how you can adjust that. Resource, resource rename is where you do that. Now, the Denon 70, 750, it picked up that my Apple TV is named Ray A Apple TV, which is greatness, right? Now, this is where you can say, this is where I was saying, like, if you had a regular DVD player and that's all you had or an Xbox, and you can put it on a cable, uh, cable uh, satellite, which CBL means, right? Cable satellite. And then you can rename it your friendly name, and that's what will show up on the front of your screen. Okay, rewind that if you need a little bit more explanation on that, because, you know, the first time it might, might sound a little bit different. You can plug any source into any of your HDMI ins out here, and you can rename it if you want to. And this is where you would do it, right? Hide your resources if you only have one source, like an Apple TV or an Xbox or a PlayStation or some kind of stick. Then you can go ahead and show them or you can say no show. So I would hide, hide because I only have one thing and that's my Apple TV. Okay? And you go back in here and show. I'm trying to show you how I would set mine up. Source levels. Okay, we're going into source levels now. And this is just in case your source level is, for some reason, your Xbox is a little bit louder than your Apple TV. This is where you adjust it up or down to make a match, all right? Now we're going into speakers. Odyssey setup slash assistant, setup assistant. This is where you would do that right now, okay? Manual setup, let's just go through it right now. App, assist, uh, app assignment is that you want to go ahead and assign where you want to set up. If I'm, if I'm setting up the zones, I'll set up the zones right now. 
If you did the uh, assistant setup to make it easy, it would automatically know what it's going to be 5.1.2, 5, you know, 7.1, it would know that, right? Speaker config. After you've done your Odyssey setup or your manual setup, you would go and you adjust everything. If you heard my last video, I move everything to large because I know my setup. I move everything into large and I make sure it knows that I have a subwoofer because I know my speakers. Now, if you have smaller speakers, then if it starts cracking, then move it into um, small. But whatever your uh, uh, setup assistant, your Odyssey does, you might want just want to stay with that, right? These are all extra things you can do. Speaker distances, again, if you're doing your setup assistant, this will be right. You can take a tech measure and measure everything from your rears to your center. This is where you would make those uh, adjustments. Typically in a regular house that has regular ceilings, that's not a problem, but I did have that problem when I was in a loft and had a you know 25 foot ceiling. Levels, again, if you run your, if you ran your um, setup assistant, the levels should be good, but just in case you prefer your centers to be a little bit louder, a little, a little more bass, this is where you would do that. Uh, test tone start, this is where I would say you always want to do that even after the assistant setup so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like if you're trying to, it's all, all it's playing is that static. It's going front to center to left, right? My dramatics. Crossovers, it's not doing anything right now because I have everything on large. Rewind, rewind. Crossovers is not showing up because I have everything on large. If I did, if I did speaker config and I move one of these things to small, and now I'll go to crossovers, now I can click crossovers. Rewind that if you need to because that's a big thing, okay? But generally, everything's gonna be based on 80 hertz. That's what THX says to do. All personal, you know, I mean, it depends on what kind of, I mean, if I was outside, I just wouldn't go 80, i go higher, right? That's just me telling you my experience. If I was inside 80 all day long, THX says move to 80 and adjust from there, okay? So again, it was not available because I did everything on, everything large. Crossovers are now not available, okay? And then bass, do you, this is making sure that, you know, on your low frequency, do you want to just um, change your low frequency hertz or your crossover to just your your subwoofer or your subwoofer and mains? Some mains have sub, uh, subwoofers built into them, that's why, okay? Now, we're going to go into the network. Do I really want to go into the network? Network is configuring your network, knowing what kind of connection you have, setting up yourself, wireless or not, right? The connection here, that's where you configure it, okay? Um, your EV, if you have an access to a, a network cable, an RJ45, you want to do a direct connection. And usually it's pretty easy because, you know, it's behind your console, right? On the TV, it's a little bit more difficult sometimes because you're conduit, you know, your wall and things like that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I'm just going to go bounce out of that because, you know, that's that's, that's, uh, that's network connections. This right here, again, one of the settings, it tells you just in case you're troubleshooting with Denon, it tells you they'll probably ask you what's your sub-network IP and all that kind of stuff, right? Network control, you know, always on, always off. You know, that's, uh, again, I, I really want to bypass all this just because of the fact that it's different from your AV stuff. You could have this totally off and it would not affect your AV. You can use... All your, you know, your network settings is doing your firmware updates and everything like that, and I prefer to do it USB anyway. Let me actually repeat that. The network on your AV is not that important because I typically do USB upgrades, and, and that's a whole different kind of video. Let me know if you need more details on that. I already have them out there for the MR. He also count that does all your streaming and things like that. You know, go ahead and go ahead and play with that. I don't personally do that. Everything's coming through my Apple TV. Okay. General settings, your language, eco. We're gonna go and turn that. So off, okay? We're gonna go and turn power on default to last. We're gonna keep screen display to auto. That's your that's your um, front display, okay? And we're gonna make sure your auto standbys are on. This is the main thing, okay? Main thing is eco mode off. 
Bluetooth transmitter, that's what you use when you want to pair something. That should be straightforward. Um, don't need to do that when you just do an AV, okay? Uh, zone 2 setup, this is where you want to know if you want to vary, meaning like if you turn the volume on your AV, is it going to turn the volume on your zone 2 at the same time, or you want to be separate? What you would do there is you would say, you would have different, this is where you would adjust that volume, is here. Like say you had this, you had the AV inside the house, and you had speakers in your patio, this is where you would have it all set up, okay? Volume limit, again, so your speakers don't blow up, and your guests are doing things, they can get that, they can, you can limit that, okay? Power on volume, the last time you turned it off and on, or a default, you know, 60, 70, things like that. Zone rename, you rename your zone so you know what's going on, okay? You're not going to go to that. Quick selection of names. Um, this is where you actually say, okay, my quick select button, which is on your, which is on your um, bottom, almost the last row right here, quick select, will tell you what your sources are going to be at. And this is where you program them. From display, dimmer, bright. I'm gonna go in there. Again, this video is for is for what I set it up as, and this is where I set it up. So you can tell a lot of it is default. Okay, a lot of it is default. Firmware, this is where you would, this is where you upgrade your firmware, auto update if you're connected to a network, allow an update, you know, um, upgrade notice, like you have to say yes or no. Again, you can stop all this if you don't connect to the network and do it everything automatically. And then just for troubleshooting purposes, this gives you everything you want. So right now it's telling me I'm Adobe Audio. If I go change the um, the mode. So this tells you what your current state is. If you are troubleshooting and you don't know if you're on Adobe Atmos and things like that, this is where you would check that out. Okay. Same thing with the video. HDMI signal. Is it coming in at 4K right here? Okay, you know, all this color spacing, you would, if you're getting deep into it, non-default from the uh, Apple TV or Xbox or anything else, this is where you would find that information. Then the monitor itself is telling you what it can do. It's telling me my HDMI monitor can go all the way to these settings. Okay, what does that really mean? Um, this, might, this is probably more advanced for this video, but it's telling you if I can go 4K all the way up to 60 hertz, 120 hertz. 240 hertz, all that counts. Your zone information, right? Your main zone, what's it set up at? Okay. Zone two, what's it set up at? As you can tell here, you can select your source between your zone, main zone and, and, and zone two, right? If you don't know what that means, um, so you can have your patio, if it's zone two, playing out of a Bluetooth, and you can have your um, uh, main zone playing out of your, your Apple TV. Firmware, you need to troubleshoot, and any notifications out there. Tell me it's not connected to the network. All right, data usage, save and load. That's your firmware, making sure it's done. So set up lock, so no one can mess with your firmware and then reset, okay? So those are my preferred settings with a little bit of recap of the last video. Um, this video is about 25 minutes long. It's running a little long. Hopefully you're understanding between these two videos how to set up your 750, your Denon 750 amp. And then um, again, it's not about how it sounds to me. It's not about the speeds and feeds. It's just what the settings are. Hopefully you're getting stuff from it. And then uh, and it helps you what you gotta do. And, even if you, after you buy it or before you buy it to see what, you know, if it's something for you and because there's a lot of settings, right? So hope this helps.